The latest in the gayest podcast is intended for listening by adult members of the LGBTQIA plus community and their allies. Discussions may contain material not suitable for folks under the age of 18. Listener discretion is advised. This week, we talk about Montana's anti-trans tirade. And we present our fruity film wish list. All this and more on the latest. And the gayest. And welcome back. Oh my goodness. Can you believe we're back? Uh, no, it's crazy. Uh, I, know, I thought I was right? going to get hit by a bus by now, but you know, life it, finds a way. It's, you know, and I feel like it, 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 I, I feel like I just saw you like a day ago and like, here we are. Oh yeah, like, we did. <laughs> yeah. Cause I kind of did like just see you not in, ago. not in person. Uh, unfortunately, because he does, Joshua does live a state away from me. Yeah, um, I'm in. But, well, no, dude, I don't want to say where you're from. I was gonna say, yeah, no, we're that 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 part's confidential. Um, but anyway, I mean, I did kind of dox myself that one time. I was like, yeah, yeah. I'm, I live right next to this restaurant. I was talking about oh. in my car, but it's fine. I don't I don't think anyone's gonna come looking for me <laughs> if they do. Mm. Do you think the Russian mafia is gonna come after you? No, the Venezuelan mafia. Oh, okay. Did you? Like, I, I, I've I've made some enemies. Did you? Did you piss off Fidel Castro? That's Cuba. Oh, you're right. <laughs> yes. I okay. <laughs> it's totally like I two did. unrelated things. Uh, Castro and Putin, but <laughs> you know, pretty much every dictator there is like currently alive has a vendetta against me. Um, but, you know, that's neither here nor there. Um, because today we're talking about what is the latest and the gayest with your host to me, Josh. We certainly am. And I'm also here too. Hi, my name is Alex. Thanks for joining us. Um, wow. Wow. We wow. What have you been up to lately, my friend? Um, I have this pimple right here that I can't see because my beard's in the way. And uh, I, actually, I can't, it's like growing and I can't tell if it's a pimple or an ingrown hair. And it's not like grown in enough to like I can like pop it or like do something about See, it. See, that's why I could never do. That's why I I shave my face daily. I mm-hmm. don't like facial hair. Can't do it. I don't enjoy it. I can't do the rigmarole of. I also the reason I shave every day is because my facial hair grows back quicker than most folks. Really? Like, some people have the luxury of being able to shave, like, some guys I know can, like, shave, you know, two or three times a week and kind of just, like, you know, their face is still baby smooth. Mm-hmm. But for me, I'll shave at, like, you know, 2 p.m., let's say. Yeah. And then the next day when I wake up, I've got, like, all this scruff just like already back which i know that's like you know that's how the human body works but my hair my facial hair has just it's ever since i started growing facial hair in my body it's always grown back quicker than most people i know it's same with Mm. my pubes like do you do you like do the whole manscaping the whole nine yards of i so here's the thing when it comes uh when it when it comes to the uh when it comes to the berries i do i i like to you know really berries. really keep it smooth uh when it, yeah when it comes to the when it you know how some people say like twig and berries is like no a, i've never heard that before you've never heard of that i've never heard of twig and berries yeah you're twig and berries <laughs> that's like a, that's like uh, a thing that people say for your like your your penis and your balls anyway um uh, <laughs> um uh, for, the, for just the, about like twig like not, yeah. why not why not branch and berries <laughs> Because twig, it sounds like oh you got got that little twig. Oh, in there. I was gonna like, say, yeah, I was gonna say that would imply damn. you got it. You got a little pecker. Yeah, yeah. So I, I and also branch and berries. That's B and B. Like going to a B and B. Yes, I'm gonna go. <laughs> stay, I'm gonna go stay in a B and B. 
um get on this B&B baby um anyways. oh yeah but you, 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 I, you're, you're I do. Me. So when it comes to the nutsack, <laughs> I keep it smooth. Um, I don't like, I really only, the thing is though, I really only trim it like once a month. Mm, okay. Like I don't, I'm not like one of those people that has like a vigorous, like every single week, every Sunday, I... <laughs> you know trim it up a little bit i don't have that kind of energy and i don't have time because you don't take the long clippers in the shower with you no exactly so i just like once a month whenever i can find the time i'll do a little trimming but like i just when it comes to the the regular like the bush i i don't go like full clean shave but i'll like trim it Mm mm-hmm because it i i don't know i've never like i guess i i've always been so hairy that like the hair has kind of that's just kind of like normal for me you know what i mean yeah 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 like that just yeah. it, when it's like insanely smooth down there it, it as nice as it is it feels weird to me it does feel weird it's also you have about five and a half hours to enjoy the smooth feeling until mm-hmm. it's hammer time. Oh yeah, until and then fucking... don't forget about like razor bumps and shit like razor that. bumps, ingrowns, and then the pricklies, and then it itches. Yeah, and... and then when it all starts to grow back, then you're gonna be like itching your crotch like every other second. Yeah, because it's 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 just not it's just not good. Yeah, I I haven't I don't shave like that religiously down there. Well, because also I don't wear underwear. So, that's true that's true well i've been wearing underwear through the winter um but it's becoming to the season where i'm gonna, <laughs> I was gonna sh- shed my skin we're officially we're officially into the the free ball in season yeah yeah so to all my friends families and loved ones um prepare yourself because i'm because <laughs> it gets boy, hot and i'm like it's just the, the boys, boys are back. The, boy, the boys are back in town <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, I just, I don't, I, I don't do it. People know me that I've not, it's been years. I mean, I'll, I, I start doing it for the winter because the winters up here are so nasty and brutal and despicable. Oh, God. And I was like, you know what? I just gotta, I just gotta. Mm-hmm. But like now, I don't gotta. Let it, make me. let it, let it, fry. let loose. <laughs> let it, let it. <laughs> this is, <laughs> Let it, That's what Lucy was like, talking about. Free this ball. is this is what yeah. If you thought that Lucy Laduca's song was about like partying and having fun, you were incorrect. It was about free balling it in your shorts and letting going... letting feeling the breeze rustle ever so carelessly between yeah. your testes. Exactly. This. And I mean. Yeah. I, I it, it means put on short shorts, uh, go to the crate and barrel and sit on all of the fucking oh yeah nice furniture they have. And then you're Which gonna I've... get like you're gonna get the thing is though you're gonna like you're gonna go test out the couches, and then some poor employee will be like walking around crate and barrel, and they'll see this like weird egg looking stain, on like all the couches. You're gonna be like, what the hell is going on here? What what happened? It's somebody... <laughs> Was somebody dying Easter eggs on our on our couches? No, nope. <laughs> it was just a really sweaty twenty five year old. So you're calling me who... sweaty? You're calling me a sweaty, <laughs> stain ridden fucking? <laughs> you're not wrong, but how it was you? a it was a it was just a sweaty uh, man uh, man in his twenties, um, free ball in it at a crate and barrel. Which honestly, I've been looking at like. Cause I'm moving soon. Um, oh, you've been going furniture. crazy, Meryl. No, like I just looked at prices of couches, and I wanted uh, to. Okay. I wanted to commit not alive anymore. Yeah. Cause they're ex- crate and barrel. Crate and barrel's. Ex- I know. I know. Crate they're and barrel's expensive. Like, hand, but like, they're really expensive. Furniture in general, like I'm getting some stuff from IKEA, and it's like mm-hmm. even that is like even IKEA is too the much. De- oh, absolutely. No, I. Mm-hmm. I mean, the desk I'm using currently to Mm -hmm. like record this is from ikea but like goddamn this shit it it did 
it, it cost a it did cost a penny a pretty penny mm. yeah oh yeah and i i am pretty sure like I, I i have a lot more shit from ikea like but that's you know that's also the beauty of um places like facebook marketplace mm-hmm. and like thrift stores and shit like that you can find well, thrift stores i get that... a little iffy about because i'm near that's the city fair. so i gotta worry about like oh, rats, that's bed bugs. true that's true that's true yeah so you... like facebook marketplace yes facebook marketplace is pretty fierce because like i can go to their house i can be like hmm this looks like the dump i don't maybe want to taste like this place or you can go to like yeah i could be like oh i'm picking up a couch in like the nice part of newton mm-hmm. absolutely they're probably keep taking care of that shit mm-hmm. yeah, like some I... middle-aged woman that's getting a divorce is getting rid of her couch yes i'll take that couch because i that yeah. she probably took she took better care of that couch she took care of her marriage so. <laughs> she took she took better care of that lazy boy recliner than she did for her own husband who and children yeah exactly her well now ex-husband because she fucks the pool boy and, and she murdered him that's true that's true and she and has that, to leave and she's gotta go she's she's gotta and, leave the country now yeah and she, I'm, i'll leave you so real I'll, cheap. I'll leave you a bag of wet singles tonight <laughs> tonight you just gotta you just gotta clean it up a little bit you just gotta clean it up a little bit <laughs> the place is yours but i'm leaving tonight tonight so here's the thing <laughs> oh uh, and gosh. that other refrigerator don't open it <laughs> I, I, I love that shit oh my god okay a while i think it was like last summer my mom was house hunting because she was mm-hmm. trying to find a place to 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 move to and there was this one house that i looked at with her which it was definitely mm. like a, a fixer-upper like there was no mm. doubt there was no doubt that this place was like you know ready to move in like this was definitely you know a whole gut and pull operation no. um but when we were looking at the place it there was a sign on the garage uh at the property that said whatever you do do not open the side door of the garage and we were just like um um who's uh who's whose body is in there what like is there is there a meth lab are they conducting some kind of like frankenstein experiment in there like what is happening in this garage and specifically at the side door that they do not want us to know about like that's i don't know yeah that's totally not concerning at all but and you know me first thing i do open up that side door oh absolutely I, I wouldn't even have. I wouldn't even have bought the place yet. I wouldn't even be looking at the. Pla- I I wouldn't even be house hunting yet. And then I'd be like, you would have just shown up and been like, all right, Mary, let's do this. See, because yeah. I'm the kind of girl like if it says employees only, I said no, thank you. I'm going in anyways. No, ma'am, I will be using that employee bathroom. I will be using yeah, and I will be taking a. <laughs> That's gross. Never mind. And I and I and the the fire of a million suns will be coming out of my rectum let's just say my ibs is ibs in so yeah You're but gonna... you know but you know that the employee bathroom has like the bad clean. toilet paper no that's a good it... i would think I not like have good toilet paper no because they don't like the good you, some companies like cheap out on the because they want to use like some i i've seen some companies that like cheap that's, out yeah for their well, employee they even... restrooms because there's the employee restrooms, and then there's either at a public restroom, which is equally nasty, or there's no restroom in public at all. Right. Depends. I don't know. Either way. Uh, Speaking if we're of... talking like, if we're talking like the bank, it's going to be nice. That's true. But if we're talking like Ben and Jerry's, it might not be as Yeah, as or like your local diner. Yeah. Like, that's a whole different scenario. Yeah. But speaking of Ben and Jerry's, let's take a break. Right. And welcome back. We are here with your favorite uh, queer news segment, Queer Quandaries, where Alex and I bring you all this week's latest news. Let's 
get into some news, shall we? We shall. I think we, I think we shall. But, you know, that's just me. Um, so recently, starting off on a little bit of a, a somber note, um, but when also, aren't we starting off on a somber note? Like, I, was, that's, I feel like people have just grown to expect that at this point with yeah. this segment. Uh, um, Montana Governor Greg uh, G Gian Gianforte, however the fuck you say his name, um, has signed into law a bill banning gender affirming care for transgender minors. Um, Greg, who is a Republican, signed the legislation Friday, and it take uh, it is scheduled to take effect October first, according to the Montana Free Press. Mm. Um, the Human Rights Campaign termed the measure dra- uh, draconian, dra- draconian, 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 draconian. That's the word. Um, it said it was made worse than its original version because of amendments requested by the Republican governor. Senate Bill 99, quote, is a wide-ranging bill that would make it effectively impossible for healthcare practitioners to provide appropriate best practice gender-affirming care to transgender youth, according to an a- uh, HRC press release. It would also forbid state employees who work with minors from promoting treatment for gender dysphoria, chilling the ability uh, of educators, public health workers, child care workers, and employee uh, employees of the state medical facilities to be able to do their job. Recipients of Montana Medicaid and the, the CHIP program will not be able to receive coverage for gender-affirming care. The ban on the promotion of treatment applies to social trans uh, social transition as well as medical. Officials with the Movement Advancement Project said it's the first legislation they know of that restricts social transition. Um, the legislative process for Senate Bill 99 was partially const- uh, part- was particularly on continuous. Um, Democratic Representative Zoe Zephyr, one of the first trans mm-hmm. lawmakers in Montana, told her colleagues they'd have quote, blood on their hands if they approve this bill. Republicans, who hold a majority of the legislature, then barred Zephyr from speaking on the House floor for the rest of this year's session. Some citizens who came to the Capitol to demonstrate their support were arrested, including groups of LGBTQ plus activists and allies um, who uh, expressed their hope this Friday that the law would be blocked by the court but unfortunately, that was not the case. So, just yet another, you know, very in a, long, in, in a long line of southern states that are just kind of. Montana's it, it, like it, the Midwest, isn't it? Probably, but it's the same vibe. It, it's it, at this point, it basically is, like. We're, we're, they're kind of all just like in this chain of like, it almost seems like they're all just banning together mm-hmm. to like make all this shit happen. And it, it all, it, it, there's times where it seems like a little bit coincidental. Ooh, the coordinated thing by the Republican Party, I mean, mm-hmm. it's part of their, it's fear mongering. It's, uh, it's the same as like the satanic panic. And now it's like just about, fans and gay people um and it's Absolutely. just it's, it's fear-mongering it's how they make money it's how they win elections oh yeah it's part of i mean it's part of their playbook to like this fake thing that they're like panicking over basically or making people panic over mm-hmm. like if they, they have people like so like paranoid and like worked up i don't i don't yeah worked mm-hmm. up i don't want to say afraid but they're just paranoid and worked up yeah like you see all these like things that people like this girl turned like those girls that turned into the wrong uh, uh what's it called driveway getting shot uh, just oh, recently yeah. like, people like the it's just like I think yesterday or just today um in it's Texas recently yeah uh they're like this guy was shooting his gun they, they asked him like hey it's pretty loud can you not do that and yeah he shot and killed like five people 
just because he was being too loud shooting around mm-hmm. in his house. Um, it's just it's getting insane. Yeah. So I'm not surprised about this kind of stuff. It's 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 deflection. They're deflecting from mm-hmm. the real problems we're facing. Absolutely. Which, speaking of, um, oh my god, I have having like I've been very gassy lately. <laughs> have you now? <laughs> yes. Okay. And that and that's that's what I have for this week. <laughs> that and, and that's our and that's our news. Goodbye. <laughs> Um, according to an article for WBUR written by Allison Kuznets, uh, the Massachusetts LGBTQ Youth Commission proposed policy cha- changes amid nationwide threats. Thursday, oh my god, I, I, I hate the way I read things. Being dyslexic is hard, because, like, the, the cadence I have when I'm trying to, like, read my notes is, like, is this person, like, a foreign exchange student? Like, does this man have <laughs> any grasp of the English language? And the answer is no, I don't. I don't. I don't no, know what I'm doing. not really. Anyways, Thursday, the commission called on lawmakers to support bills meant to strengthen access to gender-affirming care, install new safeguards in the child welfare system, and fight discrimination. The Michigan, the commission, not the Michigan, the commission called for action from Governor Maura Healey, state legislature, and 20 different state agencies and departments. Massachusetts is the only state with an LGBTQ youth advocacy commission, and the commission has revealed its 300th annual report calling for bold moves in the face of the 470 anti-LGBTQ bills across the country. Which wow. I think it's... I did not know that we had a LG... I mean, I am no longer an LGBTQ youth. That that ship has sailed for me. Yeah. <laughs> I am I am an LGBTQ senior, but... Um, <laughs> I am I'm a senior citizen at this point. Basically, yeah. So, um... Yeah. I, I it's it's a cool thing to have and it's a cool thing that we have it here. Uh yeah. I don't I don't talk to kids, so I don't really know how they're feeling about it. But it, apparently, um in the article they talk about like there's a lot of they're reaching out to like the youth of the day and how they're bi- basically like, kids these basically days. a statewide mental health checkup and they're like, Dog, we're it's not it's not good. No. So they're pushing for uh you know, things to the uh, things are pretty fine in Massachusetts, I'll say it like that. Um but there's still work to be done, and they're calling for to strengthen the what we have and to go even further. So mm-hmm. I guess that's like, I mean, they're not doing it yet. It's yeah. pretty. I think it's pretty neutral news. Okay. But still, but still, get to know that there's people in our yeah government I mean, advocating for the little guy. It, it you know at least someone's looking out for the kids. Yeah, I'm not. I'm, we we. I was gonna say we certainly aren't. So no. No, sorry, kids. But had... you, well, because you know, there's also like some of the, there's like you know all the kids, some of the kids out there who like being mean and sassy is like their entire personality. Well, oh my god, that's the worst. The thing is, I there's something particularly heinous about because and like gay kids, you you feel this way about yourself. I mean, maybe not. But I know for me, I like just look back on how I was as a gay kid. And I'm like, oh god, god, just why, why, why did, I, why did I do that to myself? What were you going through, sweetie? Like, ugh. what, what made you act this way? Yeah, I mean, maybe, maybe this is how like straight people feel about straight kids. But like, I'm just <laughs> like, what are you, what are you talking about? Like, just shut, uh, like, you're doing too much, but also somehow doing too much, but not enough at the same time. Like, yeah. I don't. Know. I don't explain it, but you know what? Hey. There's someone looking out for y'all. So you know not what? me, but someone. No, I, there's there's people out there who are looking out for the the children. And I'm not. And we, we, we get this. I'm talking about the gay boys, the lesbians, and trans folks. You're doing great. No, we're gay boys. We're rooting for you. It's it's the little yeah. gay boys who like think who be that, working my nerves. Yeah, who think that insulting your genes is like their only personality trait. And the lesbians are in the woodshop class. Make it for Yeah, the lesbians and the trans kids, they're 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 our future leaders. Yeah. They're the they're the leaders of tomorrow. So Which actually This uh, is a kind this of is a kind personal of... shout out to the lesbians and the trans kids out there. Y'all are mm-hmm. gonna do it. Y'all are gonna make it. We rooting for you. If I ever become famous, I was thinking I would make a scholarship for like trans and gay kids to go to like tech schools. And like do like computer programming and like automotive work and like HVAC. Mm, yeah. Like there's nothing I'd like feel more like if a trans mask came to fix my car, I would feel so secure. Mm-hmm. And like 
oh, they, they, they would get the job done. Yeah, absolutely. So what, okay, so when I become famous, y'all, we're we're starting the the Joshua Gonzalez tech scholarship for underprivileged uh, queer youth. LGBTQ youth, yeah. Yeah, there you go. And then someday in the future, you could be getting your carburetor fixed by a well, mask lesbian or a a, a trans mask person or a trans feminine like or a trans femme you know mercury stardust from uh, yes TikTok? yes i do love, love 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 she's fab love love i learned how to change my wiper fluid from her i'm actually learning how to change my uh own car oil soon i'm Ooh. i'm 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 gonna be she's about to she's about to put midas I'm... midas and in, in uh Valvoline out of yeah, oil. Yeah, out of business. Chiffy Lube. Oh. Done. 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 If you, are the, if you are in the Boston area and you're gay and you have cool vibes, I will change your oil for you. There you go. I haven't learned how to do it yet. I'm, I still gotta, uh, yeah. I still gotta, I still gotta try it myself and I still might do it wrong. But when I figure out how to do it correctly, and I, I and got I you. To, I got and you. <laughs> and I have to vibe check you first. Yeah. But like, if I, if the vibe check passes, then I'll fix your. Then I then I can change your oil, and I can you know. But that's like the extent of my my knowledge here. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not doing. I'm not <laughs> switching out an engine or anything. But I mean, who knows? It can't be that hard. Someday in the future, maybe Josh's career path will be a mechanic. You never know. Um, people, ch- people change things all the time. People people get true. new jobs every day. That's true. That's true. Um. So recently. The voice of the New York City subway system and other transportation within the region has come out as transgender. Uh, Bernie uh, Wagenblast, I hope I'm saying that right, began living full time as a woman at the start of 2023, having taken to social media to make the announcement. But she had known since childhood that her true gender was not what she was assigned at birth. On the WNYC podcast, Death, Sex, Money, uh, Death, Sex, and Money, uh, Wagenblast, now 66, said she recalled first feeling like a girl at age four. She said, I remember... What's her name again? Um, Bernie Wagenblast. Now six... Uh, she's, she said, I remember clearly being at my grandmother's house, sitting in the front of her vanity, putting on some of her necklaces. And I think she had powder at her vanity and putting that on my face. It felt good. It felt natural. It felt like, why can't I do this? Um, I'm not sure when I first came across the uh, the impression that this wasn't okay, but I think fairly soon I realized that this was not okay. Adolescence was diff- uh, was pretty difficult for her because she grew up in a suburban town in New Jersey, but at age 13 she found support from a trans woman in one of the neighboring communities. Um, a newspaper had reported Paula Grossman's transition and Wiegenblast wrote to her, uh, wrote a letter to her and arranged to receive a call from her at a payphone. She called me and I just, for the first time ever, shared with somebody how I felt and talked with someone who I knew could understand what I was feeling. Wiegenblast said on uh, the podcast... Grossman was taking a risk in talking to a minor and she ended up being fired from her teaching job, unfortunately, because of her transition. They didn't stay in touch and Grossman is no longer living, but that one call meant a great deal to her. Mm -hmm. So Wagenblast eventually went on to college and married a woman, had three daughters, all while living as a man, although she had told her wife about her feelings of gender dysphoria. Wagen Bless had a career as radio as a radio reporter working for two of New York City's most popular stations and is now best known as the voice announcer on the New York City subway system, the air train and uh, at Newark Liberty Airport. The announcements are in what Wagen Bless calls her old voice, very male sounding, but she has seen a voice therapist to feminize her voice. Slay. So it's never she, too late, y'all. Absolutely. 
you can still become your true self even in your 60s and your 70s so 80s, never talk I'm just kidding, no. no but you so shout out shout out to uh shout out to miss bernie you, you, you know go, what girl. like is so her, her last name sounds like wigan blast wigan yeah wigan blast and like, that is like Honestly, Wigan Blast is now going to be a fantastic drag name, I think. But um... I, that is, it really is just like she, she really like without even knowing how hard she slayed, like she slayed. <laughs> See, the the slay was in her the whole time. It was, it was within you all along, Bernie. <laughs> you, you knew it, girl, and you did it. So, the real sleigh was the sleigh we found along the way. It's oh my god! <laughs> and the real, <laughs> the real um, economics was the friends he made along the way. I love that. I'm looking. I'm trying to just looking up like things what? about Bernie. I was just looking things up about Bernie because I was like, I know, um, I, I've I've been to New York. I've heard that voice. And I'm like, oh damn! Like yeah, that's them. Yeah, crazy. Oh, crazy. Yeah. Small world. Crazy how that works. Mm-hmm. I if wonder if she's like ever been rich. on the New York City subway system. If you ever been there, like, but like if because like everyone listens to that, so I wonder if like yeah. she gets like royalties. I guess I was gonna say, do you think she gets paid every time like it says next stop 79th Street or like whatever? I don't know. That's what that's what I want to know. Yeah, I want to I want to know if she gets like a royalty check every time like the announcers go off with you know next stop. Uh, West Sixty Second Street or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I don't I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna investigate. Maybe we'll have her on the pod and we'll ask. I, I gotta, I gotta look into that. I gotta look into a career in that, uh, that department. I could see you as a bus voiceover. Next coming stop, up, yeah, Main <laughs> Street at South Street. I next stop West Saint Pussy Street. <laughs> West Saint Pussy Street at Cunt Avenue. There is the, um, no real be- street. They're just saying gay shit like that. Bef- so before you do your next story, um, <laughs> there's this church that is like 10 minutes from where I live. And it's, I believe it's called like the, it's Ooh. supposed to be the church of St. Anne. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but if you are driving like a little bit too fast or like if you don't really get a close look at the sign that they have out front, mm. there's not really much of a space in between Saint and Anne. So if you like aren't looking that hard, it kind of looks like it says the Church of Satan. Church of Satan. I yeah, love that. That's just like, but Satan was like grossly misspelled or something. And to, it's, it's Italian version. It's still the funniest thing to me. Like I, I love it so much. But anyway, continue. All right. So our final story. Um, uh, Miami Heat basketball player. I think former. I'm not sure if they're tired or not. I don't know about sports. Sorry to this man. No. Um, uh, has moved from Florida. Is moving from Florida over anti-trans laws. In 2020, Dwayne's daughter came out as trans. Um. Daughter Zaya, I think her name is. Hmm. Uh, and Dwayne was quoted as saying, "I have to, I have to make decisions for my family, not just personal individual decisions. I mean, obviously the taxes is great, having Wade County is great, but my family cannot be accepted or feel comfortable here." Which is Dwayne Wade and uh, their family have been very supportive of the, the community over the years, especially since in 2020 they have a daughter came out as trans and they've seen a lot of backlash or. I think yeah, it's to some degree some backlash, mm-hmm. but they've been very supportive and very outspoken about their um experience. Okay, which is cool. I mean, it's cool yeah. that they're like unfortunate so that this they have to do, but cool that yeah. they're willing to like do what's necessary. It's refreshing to see a um like an athlete or like a, a public figure that in too. that kind of way, like being you know very supportive of not that like you know all the athletes out there are anti-trans but like some of the man some of the manly men out there who are in sports you know they some of them really don't care as much 
so it is refreshing when you get to see something like this. So mm-hmm. clap, 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 clap. Uh-huh. Snap, snap, clap, snap, clap, snap, 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 snap. Yeah, snap, snap. Yeah, exactly. But good for him. No, I mean, in a way. In, in, in a <laughs> roundabout way. Yeah, exactly. Sorry to leave the state. But... Yes. Sorry to this man. But anyway, um, speaking of Florida, let's take a break. When it comes to Florida, we, we do more than a break. We need, we need it. I keep saying we should blow it up. And we are back. Now, recently, this by the time this episode comes out, it will be this past week. But mm-hmm. recently, um, we we don't have a trailer yet, but we did finally get the release dates for not only uh, Heartstopper Season 2, but we finally have a release date for the Red, White, and Royal Blue movie, Yay. which is going to be coming to Amazon Prime. Little bummed about that, uh, the fact that it's only going to be on Amazon Prime, but whatever. Um, anyway, so because of this, you know, because of all this stuff coming out, we wanted to make a list of our own of certain tales, <laughs> stories, TV shows, books, you know, et cetera, et cetera, that we think would make good movies Mm -hmm. because we want to see some i i want to see more than just like the british twigs Mm -hmm. as much as i love nick and charlie i i would like to see more than just the british white twinks so i i would also like to see more than that so let's uh let's get into it all right so this is kind of a through line from last week's content Okay. But I think a dramatic retelling, and I mean dramatic, I mean, we're, this is more about the spectacle than the um, historical accuracy, I think, what okay. I want from this. I think we should have, like, one, like, documentary about it, sure, so we can, mm-hmm. like, get, like, the real tea about it. Right. But, like, a lifetime Hallmark version of the events of the Obergefell case. Oh. Okay. And like really like camp it up, really like and like the lawyer like and have Lux Nor London play one of the lawyers. <laughs> you wanna get like a uh a, a fucking um a hallmark like there's a love story going on between yes. like the defendant and the prosecutor. But like like, like between the Lux ju- and the- like the, the judge like, is secretly yeah. hooking up with with um with the prosecutor as well and yes, there's the like a love thing. triangle going on there's a murder mystery Ooh. there's a fucking amnesia involved there's like <laughs> there's always got to be like one person has to have amnesia mm-hmm. like somebody's like i don't remember who i am and like lux has to not only like win i'll see like obergefell like yeah I guess uh lux needs to like make to, to, I, to win the court case but also yeah. solve a murder i guess we can like do the whole law thing but like i want to see some love <laughs> love's in the air it's, I, I, I mean i get i do want like a very historically accurate like of this course is what happened yes but i also want like a hall like like a lifetime original of- a level plot of line, like, yeah. Like I want, like line. a fucking yeah. I want like a dramatic, fucking like, rom. Maybe do you want? Do we want like a rom com type of plot line, or do we? I want, want it like, to be like dramatic, like lifetime. Uh, fucking Meredith Baxter Barney gets like raped by a clown. Oh my god. Um, I think I want it to be more dramatic than. It's going to have campy elements. Okay. I, I want to, like, enjoy watching it, but the film should take itself very seriously. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. And I just, I think, I think that'd be a fun <laughs> topic to make a fun movie about, which, again, like, we, I, I don't want to go so crazy that it's, like, unrecognizable. Mm-hmm. But I do want to have a little bit of fun with it. I yeah, think really absolutely. Fun. Absolutely. Okay. Um, for me, this mm. one, this is a book that 
I've talked about before, but I think it bears repeating because I think the 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 gamer gaze would just absolutely froth at the mouth for this one. Um, there's a book that I've talked about before. It's called Conventionally Yours mm-hmm. by an author named Annabeth Albert. She she does actually follow the pod and like I we are like we follow each other so like hey girl You're best um teacher. yeah she she reached out to us last year actually after we did like a segment on queer literature which is actually pretty cool um, oh yeah the episode where I had nothing to contribute because I can't <laughs> read <laughs> um but anyway so it's about this like this group of kids who are a part of this like YouTube channel and it's like four of them and they all play it's like their their version of magic the gathering and they play it in this like uh they record all their videos in this like uh comic book shop slash like board game shop or like whatever um and it's all run by this like one old professor guy and then one day the professor is like hey i got us tickets to this like uh championship like uh convention in las vegas but they live like across the country Mm. and so they would have to take like unless they wanted to fly out there um they would have to take a road trip but then the day that they're leaving uh the professor guy has like a medical emergency and he can't go so um, and then, oh, and it's important to note that two of the the guys in the group are kind of like frenemies. Like they, oh, they fuck. They can get along for like, you know, content purposes, but really, like one of them's like a shy, introverted, nerdy type, and the other one is like still a nerd, but like he's more outgoing, and he's like part of um, the wrestling team, and he's like. But he's he has like a dark secret that he's like poor as shit, and like he's like this close to like losing the place that he's living in because he's like crashing with a former professor of his. Um, but anyway, so they go off on this like little road trip across the country to the uh, the Las Vegas convention. But since the the group of guys, one of them who's like too posh uh says he wants to fly the other one joins the two guys in the car but they he has to leave like halfway through because his sister also has a medical emergency for some reason a lot of medical emergencies yeah um so then it's just the two frenemies for the rest of the trip and then sure enough as the trip goes along lots of romantic plot lines ensue and you know they find out a lot more stuff about each other and there's some fucking and wait how old are they are they this college high school college okay college age um so i don't i don't i don't, I don't feel bad about saying that no no, like, no 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 they're not fucking fucking. no they're not they're not like juniors in high school um, I, was gonna, I was gonna say, oh, they learn a lot about each other, like yeah. what the cock tastes like. I was like, wait a minute, I, I need to know how old these kids are. They're no, they're they are above the they are above the age of eighteen. Don't worry. Okay, okay, okay. Um, they are above the age of consent. It's like okay, perfect. Yeah, but anyway, I think. I can... But like then, you know, when they get to the convention, they have to compete against each other, and like you know, I just want you to know. I love you, but I am going to play to win. And it's like this whole thing. And I think I I genuinely think that this would be so like, this would make such an interesting thing for the nerds out there. Like this would be a really good, like nerd romantic movie. Like this would be such a good nerd rom-com. And then there's also a few like hot scenes in there. There's like, there's some sucking and fucking that ensues, but like, not a and there's ton. a part where they hit that guy with the car. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. No, I made that. It was. Yeah. There's a whole. Thing. Yeah. There's a whole vehicular vehicular the manslaughter vehicular B plot. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> um. But I I think, 
that one. I think the gamer gaze would really would uh, really like that one. Would really pop off with that one, yeah. Yeah. It absolutely. sounds it sounds good. It sounds I would I would do it. It sounds so cheesy, but I think I'd like it. <laughs> it's a good it is really like it is truly a good book. So I would ten out of ten would recommend. But anyway. I feel that. I guess kind of because if they they said they're YouTubers. Mm-hmm. Something that I think would be a good like some kind of like doesn't have to be necessarily a movie. It can be its own YouTube video, but like a long YouTube video, like one of those like three and a half hour dissection videos. Right. And maybe Sony exists, but I want to like figure it out soon. Right. Um, a dissection of like mid two thousands and like early twenty tens gay YouTube personalities, like just dissecting, oh, talking like, about the that like Tyler like the, Oakley or the, like... the Tyler Oakley, Todrick Hall, Connor Franta, Joey Graceffa, uh, maybe Hart. Vaughan. Troy Sivan. Because uh, he used to be a YouTuber Anna before Hart. he was a musician. Let's not he was. forget. And who was, who was the... Is it that nail girl who came out as... No, Ingrid Nielsen. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yes. And then, uh, fucking is... Who, uh, fucking that... She has the red lipstick, and she does that voice like this. Oh, um... Uh, oh, that's her uh, name. And she's lesbian, right? Miranda Sings. Miranda Sings, I think she's... Is she I don't think No, I don't think she's a lesbian, because she has a husband. Who am I thinking about, then? I don't... I mean, I don't know if Miranda Sings is part of the queer community, but th- I, I have no idea. Is she... For some reason, I thought I she feel, was gay. I don't know why. No, I don't think Miranda Sings is, but that would actually... I think that would be... That would be a very good, like, documentary for people, like, our age... Like people who grew up around that time frame, I think oh, okay. this would she... be cool to like, you know, kind of get into that, like what it was like, like that whole like gay YouTube resurgence that we saw. Like, yeah, yeah, in, that it's like, in the in the early 2010s. Basically, like, because I watched a video, and kind of this is the same vibe. It was talking about. This could sound so random. Oh. But what I think it had have the same like vibe as. I watched this video, I think by T Noir, okay. talking about Nicki Minaj and what it was like when <laughs> Nicki Minaj Itty Bitty Piggy there. got uh a beam me up Scotty, I mean. Oh. Uh her mixtape got dropped and like what it was like when she Nicki like really rose to prominence. Mm. And just talk about like the culture at the time, what people were talking about what the discourse was and what the reactions were to these types of things. Right. Um, so I just like dissecting that time period to be like, I just think it'd be really cool. Okay. Yeah. And seeing where everyone is now. Cause like, obviously I don't know what anyone else, I don't know. I mean, besides Todd call and Troy Savon, I don't, I don't know Definitely. what these people are doing. <laughs> no, that's fair. So like, yeah, well, I mean, yeah, no, they're, they're Todd and Troy are like the only ones. They're like, who... uh, they're like the, B list celebrity. I mean, I don't say B because like A list is like fucking the Beyonce's of the world. So I'm not trying. Yeah, to, exactly. I'm not. I'm not trying to like dog no, on. No on offense to Troy Sivan, but, but anyway. Yeah, and maybe a little because he's. A yeah. But um, <laughs> um, one that I think would be kind of fierce is this is another one that I think has really good rom com potential and mm-hmm. can be a two parter because there are two books out in this series. Another another book. Um, it's a it's a series called Boyfriend Material, which is about it's uh, by uh, this author named Alexis Hall, and she, uh, it starts off it follows this guy um, who's like the kid this uh, this guy named um, oh, fuck me what is his name um, uh, fuck 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 fuck. His uh, Luke O'Donnell. His name is Luke O'Donnell, and he's like the kid of this like famous '80s rock star, and like the famous '80s and '90s rock star. And but like his dad was like notoriously not involved in his life, mm-hmm. and he was kind of raised by his mom. Um, but he's kind of like you know a stereotypical like nepo baby who like goes out and gets trashed way too often and it's kind of just famous for being the kid of a famous person Mm -hmm. um and he one day his friends are like 
uh, he he does have a job, but like his job is like you gotta start getting on the up and up, dude, or like we're gonna have to fire you. And his friends are like, why don't you just get somebody to be your boyfriend for like you know publicity's sake, someone who's really like a good guy. And one of his friends recommends this person who he can't stand because he's like this uptight lawyer guy, who is like very the opposite of him like very organized very neat very this that and the other thing and but they both agree that they were like okay this is my reasoning for why you should pretend to be my boyfriend exactly so they're both getting something out of it so they go and they like are each other's fake boyfriends but they eventually fall in love and i think be i think this would be a fun look into like nepo babies oh yeah and nepo like babies, yeah Kate. this is a very like it, it's a it's a huge like deep dive into like a gay nepo baby like lifestyle but also like falling in love and i think it has very good rom-com potential so i think that would be really, hey, yeah really cool and you said there's two these are two books yeah and there's a second one called husband material which I have yet to read, but I, oh. it, it again, I think it, you know, you could turn it into a two parter because there's two books to the series. So, as long as the second book is good, um, yeah. totally good. Honestly, the setup sounds like it's, I don't say better for a TV show, but I could see it. Well, I mean, I don't have to read the book, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Because that, I mean, that's, that's just a premise. I mean, no, uh, I mean, that it, it could, I feel like it could be both. I feel like there's a way. Oh. To, I feel like there's a way to make it like both, like a I movie wonder, or a TV show. What makes more money, TV shows or movies? Maybe I, I feel like because TV, TV shows, shows can get like re-aired and like yeah, you get. I mean, movies uh, can too, but I don't know. But that's like, good, that's a good question. Movies show on like more obscure channels, but like. You could get a show to play on, like, I don't know, Fox or something, or mm. ABC. Yeah. And when, it, when they do reruns of it, they can do reruns to kind of fucking whatever they want. So, like... Yeah, exactly. TV shows get rerun more than... I don't know. Except I, I just thought, like, like, let's say if I have this book, would, and I don't care about ethics, or I just care about making money. Yeah. What, 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 makes, what makes me more money? Adapting it to a TV show or adapting it to a movie? That's well, and and it also like who are you selling the movie rights to? That's a question because if you're selling it to a big time director like James Cameron, you could probably get a lot of money out of it. But if you're selling it to a more obscure director, then who knows what's gonna happen? Yeah, who knows? Exactly. I don't know. Anyway. Sorry, just a random thought I had. Do um, you one last, one last one, because we do have. Which to one do I want to do? I think I'll do this one because I stay on Bob and Monet so much that I want to echo their <laughs> sentiment. I think, a, I think Bob and Monet should make a sibling rivalry the movie, and they Absolutely. totally could. Um, I would watch it. But also something that Bob talks about a lot is um, a lady bunny biopic. Oh, because that would be really interesting. And I mean, this is not this is like not at all original idea. This is something Bob says all the fucking time. But um, Lady Bunny is just such a She's... obscure person. Oh, like, absolutely. There's a lot of aspects of Lady Bunny's life that are just like strange, mm-hmm. but like interesting. Like she oh, lives in totally. South Africa. Uh, she's the amount of people that she's met over the years. Like mm-hmm. besides, you know, besides RuPaul. Yeah, like, yeah, she's known Ooh. a shit ton of people, so she... I think she could definitely like. There's room for a lot of characters in a, a biopic like that. So I, I would, I would be so down for a lady. Yeah, bunny, like Lady Bunny. A lady she bunny also biopic. did the roast of Pamela Anderson. I think. Did she? I think so. I did not. Yeah. Is oh wow. She uh is in the roast of Pamela Anderson. Well, there you go. And then, yeah, Lady Bunny's, like, she's really, been, like, done a lot. She's been around for longer than we think. Or also, I think, like, a drag legends thing, like... Yeah. Is... Uh, oh, uh, I don't know if you ever talked about this in the pod, but 
we could definitely should be involved in it. It would be Coco Peru, Barla Jean Merman, Jackie Beat, uh, Lady Bunny, and then rest in peace, Hecklina as well. Do you know yes. Hecklina? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. was unfortunate. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. But um, I think yeah, that would that would definitely I would either one honestly. I think mm-hmm. there's a lot of room. I think Lady Bunny by herself has could do a whole one. Oh, totally, totally. Um, and then like last second mention, you know that one vine that's just like a chaotic mess of like the you hear like the music that goes like da 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 and there's that girl swinging her ponytail and then like they're fighting about something and then it's like bitch i swear to god (laughs) i want to see like a lifetime i want to see like a a lifetime original movie like based off that i want to i want to see like that but like turned into a movie oh my god no that that's actually fucking insane but you i totally would could. you totally could. yeah right you could you yeah could, you can, <laughs> there's like some big secret drama going on behind the scenes that like we don't know about bitch i swear to god exactly also, like what i love too is that like that girl could beat that twink's ass i could mm-hmm. tell that he was in a loser right or wrong he was on the losing side of that he was not gonna he make was... it out alive <laughs> i don't think he and maybe he didn't i don't know probably maybe not he... Have to see the movie. Maybe he yeah. doesn't make it out alive. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh my god. I uh, that would be fierce. I I, I want to find it now. Like, do you? I don't. Let's look at it now. Well, it's, it's, while... I can look that up too. <laughs> while we're doing that, um, thanks so much for joining us on this lovely, lovely day. Um, you can like, subscribe, rate, and review the latest and the gayest on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Amazon Music, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, and Radio Public. And please subscribe to our YouTube channel where you can find all past, present episodes of The Latest and the Gayest available for free the day that they come out. And you can find the video episode of this week's brand new episode up every Wednesday. And follow us on social media on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at TLATGPod to stay up to date on all things The Latest and the Gayest. And check out our link tree, which can be found in the bio of all of our social medias to not only find where you can listen to the show and find our socials, but you can also find some charitable organizations that we are promoting at the moment. And with that, thank you for joining us. And bitch, I swear to God, we have to go take we have to go take a break.